What's up YouTube? I'm back again. Uh, this is the bug out vehicle edition. Uh, last, vi last video that I shot, uh, we spoke a little bit about bug out bags and I showed you the contents that are inside my bug out bag. But now we're going to focus on what you should pack inside your bug out vehicle. Of course, first and foremost, uh, our, our plan of action should be to try to stay in and bunker down inside the house. But uh, if things turn hairy and we actually have to bug out, then we want to make sure that our vehicle is equipped with all of the equipment and supplies that we need in order to make it to our bug out destination. Um, so on this video, here are just a few things that I pack inside of my bug out kit and uh, my bug out truck. And here we go. Let's get this thing started. Well, we have a couple vehicles here. Um, but I think the most practical vehicle for bugging out is going to be uh, our 2006 Ford Explorer. And the reason I, I picked the Ford Explorer is because uh, six cylinder is good on gas. There's been no uh, type of mechanical or cosmetic um, uh, adjustments made to the vehicle. It's not been lifted or anything like that. And uh, when you pick your bug out vehicle, you wanna make it as minimalistic as possible. That's what I chose to do because in the situation uh, where you wanna go gray or be a gray man as to speak, is you wanna blend in with society as much as possible. And so what you wanna do is you wanna pick a vehicle that's practical. You know, you see most guys when they, they modify their vehicles and they put, you know, uh, gun holsters in their vehicles they have molly hanging from the visors and things well you know all of these things are kind of a dead giveaway right they're showing that you're one of the people that's prepared and you have all of the supplies inside your vehicle and it makes you a target well mine is just a standard family SUV uh, no modifications nothing like that so I'm not gonna really be a target and I can take parts off of a 2002 Explorer all the way up to a 2007 Explorer. So if this car were to break down, not only is there multiple uh, types of vehicles just like mine that are on the road, then all the parts are interchangeable with my vehicle. So if this one were to break down, I can steal a part or I could just switch vehicles. And this setup that you see before you can fit on another Explorer should we come across one. Uh, What's not practical is, you know, having a lifted vehicle or a vehicle that's not so common on the road because once that vehicle breaks down or you need a part, where are you going to get it from if, no, if everyone is not driving around in a lifted Rubicon or, you know, or a Tacoma, right? So these are, are not common cars you see on the street. I picked one that's pretty common. So let's get into the contents of this bug out vehicle. Here, I pack my, my Husky toolkit. Uh, toolkit is gonna, of course, be for repairs for your bug out vehicle. Uh, just some of the common things. Uh, flashlight, a little thing of WD-40. It's kind of self-explanatory. Ratchets, uh, box wrenches. Inside of here, I have extra wire inside of the bug out kit. I have spline, fishing spline. Um, I'm gonna uh, explain to you why I keep the fishing spline in here later on. We got some Gorilla duct tape. I don't really need to explain how good duct tape or all the uses for duct tape. Um, and then I have Milwaukee and I have a assortment of drill bits inside of this Milwaukee uh, pack. And the reason I have drill bits is because I also carry with me drill the reason I carry this drill is because these drills have a lithium ion battery battery and this is a 20 volt um, I also have a power source which can charge this battery however with these lithium ion batteries if you do not beat the crap out of them then these lithium ion batteries work pretty good as a matter of fact I charged this lithium ion battery about two months ago fully charged and listen to that this battery still has plenty of life in it with the lithium battery so I actually knock on wood um, 
I actually swear by lithium batteries because they keep their power for a very, very long time. As long as you you use your, your drill minimalistically, then it'll do the jobs that you need. Moving forward, this is kind of like a right away kit for your vehicle. As you can see, loaded inside of our kit, we have a Rayovac battery. This is kind of one of the old school ones, storm batteries, waterproof. I also keep one up here inside the vehicle for emergency situations inside of the car. Uh, this one can go up there as well if you needed it to. You keep emergency ponchos inside of this kit. What's this? Oh, look at that. It's a plug kit. You pop your tire. Not only do you have a full spare underneath these Ford Explorers, but you have a tire repair kit in case you catch a flat. And this is neat. These things are very inexpensive and you can get them off of Amazon. But it is a, a little survivor knife. If I can get this thing open. A little survivor knife and it comes with your knife and a little small flint with it. So you're able to, to make a fire. And that's inside the little bug out kit. Uh, this is good when inside your, your bug out vehicle, but I will also suggest that you make one of these for your wife's personal vehicle and for your personal vehicle. This little box, which is just a little Rubbermaid container, can come in handy for an everyday uh, carry situation inside of your truck. We have a small little 99 cent ice scrapers that you can get from Walmart. We have hot hands inside of this kit. We have just in case, which is an emergency kit. It comes with the wires, a very minimalistic first aid kit inside this thing. Here we have some wintertime gloves. We have a stem kit for your tire repair. This little thing that comes with the just in case actually folds out and it's an SOS sign. So make sure you keep hold of that and you don't throw it away if you decide to get one of these. Uh, another thing we have is a little blanket and a tire pressure gauge. And those are the contents that will probably be in your EDC. You know, most people, when they set up their bug out vehicles, you know, they, they make it so everything is kind of locked inside the vehicle. But in a you know, uh, a situation where, you know, the country goes to crap and everybody's kind of out for their own game or out to get as many resources as possible. You don't want to have all of your resources inside of your vehicle and vulnerable to, to thieves and people who want to pillage and break inside of your equipment, right? So this little box stays inside the vehicle. I mean, it's not going to be much of a thing if that thing gets lost, whatever. Here we are inside of our vehicle. Some self-explanatory things that we got here. We got our water. These both can fit six gallons a piece. So that's 12 gallons of water right there. And here's your, your empty gas can for emergencies. I actually have a breaker bar. If you can see that back there, that's a breaker bar. And it has the half inch bit already on it. Uh, size to fit on the lug nuts for our vehicle. Here we have two chairs here. The chairs aren't really a necessity. I mean, if you need the space, you take those and you chuck them, throw them away, you know, put them inside the house. If it's taking up space, you can utilize that space or something else. But I got those in there for now, just because me and my wife used them to sit in the park at, at a certain time. Here we have a roller. Uh, remember I mentioned just momentarily ago that uh, most people have their stuff inside of their vehicle. Well, if you situate your things inside your bug out vehicle, you know, in a locked toolbox and all the contents are loose and they, they slide back and forth or they're not secured, you know, what happens if you're targeted by someone and your vehicle is attacked because they realize that you have resources? Well, you're not very mobile with the resources that you do have in your car. You know, in a situation where you gotta get out real fast, what are you gonna do? Pick up each individual thing and carry it in your arms? 
No, you're gonna have to leave immediately, especially if you're under fire. You're gonna have to leave immediately and you're gonna have to leave all of your resources behind. Which brings me to another topic is a lot of people double pack. A lot of my, my equipment that I pack is on my bug out bag. My bug out bag is equipped with everything that I need to bug out right away. So a lot of things that people do is they double pack. The things that they could put inside of their bug out bag, they also put inside their vehicle. Everything that I have out in my bug out bag is for me to go. Everything that's inside my vehicle, if I leave it and I still have my bug out bag, then I'm absolutely fine. So let's dig into these two boxes and, and look at the contents. Well, first, if I needed to, where I wasn't in a hurry, I could take the contents of my boxes with me because I carry a little roller. And as long as we're on a road or something, then I could cut my zip tie here and then I could pull out my paracord. I could put my roller on the ground and then I could sit my boxes on top of my roller so I'm able to build. I sit this box on my roller and let's go through the contents of this box here. Inside this box, first thing we got is we have extra batteries. We have candles. We have a trash bag. Now I'm assuming that if you watch a lot of prepper videos, then you know what a lot of this stuff could be used for. Self-explanatory. I have a first aid kit, a little small first aid kit. We have a gas siphon. You know, you don't want to get gas inside your mouth. So you stick this down, give it a couple pumps, and then you can siphon gas out of cars that have been abandoned or left on the road in the event that the country is under panic. A lot of people are gonna leave their vehicles. You know, so, you know, if you need fuel, then, you know, robbing it out of, the, uh, out of another vehicle or taking it from another vehicle is an option. We have tow strap here. We have a tarp. We have two tarps times two. We have tent stakes for securing our tarps down in case we need to make a shelter. We got another one of those batteries that I told you about. We got two wool blankets, fireproof. And we have another one of those, those knives with the fire starters. We got canopy ties. And look at this. We have three of these cool zone sleeping bags inside of here ready to go so we have sleeping sleeping equipment medical equipment tarps we got canopy ties we have a knife and a flint a way to make fire we have lighting we have blankets for warmth so this little box has everything that we need in an emergency. So now we put this on. Now it's a little raised, that's why I had the zip tie, I had the uh, 550 paracord on the sides holding it down a little bit. But then this box is gonna set right there on top there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open this box. And look at that, wow. We got another one of these, imagine that. Another lighting. We have road flares at the top of that box. We have an extra cord to charge your phone there. What is this? Vac, Vac Life. A car air compressor. So in case you need air inside your tire, what, the gas stations? You're going to stop at a gas station? One thing you want to do when you're bugging out your vehicle is try to stay as far away from the city as humanly possible because the city is where you're going to be running into a lot of your problems. Here, you got a little hand crank radio, all boxed up and ready to go. I, I service test all of my equipment that I order, and then after that, it goes right back into storage in case of emergency. We got four storage hooks.
keep those. If you got your drill, you keep your lithium ion drill, then those will come in handy. Right here, we got dressing sponges. We have a CPR mask. We have trauma dressings inside of this box. We have another one, we have another four person tent located in here. We have TP and for the restroom. We have a respirator with two extra filters on the side. And here's a little thing they call a happy camper. What it is is it doubles as a light and it doubles as a fan. So if you and your family end up bugging outside your vehicle and it's in the summertime, you can hang this thing from the roof of the car. You can set it on the dashboard of the car, turn the fan on and circulate a little bit of air for you and your family because you want to preserve gas. And so you're not going to run and run the AC or cause any undue damage to the vehicle. So you want to you want to do your due diligence and keeping your vehicle as operable as possible while you're out there. And here I also have an extra backpack. Uh, I have an extra backpack right here. So when you're inside the car, if you're gonna do a little bit of reconnaissance work, you're gonna do a little bit of reconnaissance work and there's a couple things inside either your boxes or inside your bug out bag that you wanna take with you. Uh, say you put on a different outfit and you wanna go out into a town and you kind of want to go and do some, you know, gray man reconnaissance, you know, and figure out what's going on. And, and or you want to go into a city and use your Silcock key and procure more water or something like that on a building. Then, you know, you use your second bag to go into town or go somewhere to do that. Uh, these are our shin protectors in case you're out in the woods and you encounter thorns and and. Uh, Poison sumac, poison oak, things like that. It will protect your, your shins while you're out there. And those are the contents that are inside of this second box here. So another thing, when I was saying that you want to make yourself mobile as possible, was also inside of this top box, because it's a smaller box, and how I had it inside the truck is exactly how I'm gonna set it up in a situation. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take you're gonna take either a bungee or you're gonna take either your, your toe strap and you're gonna run it under the bottom, underneath your roller, and you're gonna secure both the top the both the boxes to the roller itself in order to keep it stationary. And once you do that. Once you keep it stationary, then you can see we're mobile. Coming back over to the trunk, now that we've addressed all of this, over here we have extra ammunition in the back of our vehicle. Look under here, we have a four-way, we have a funnel. We have more of those hooks that I was referring to, or uh, extra hooks under here. Look at this. We have us a fire hydrant opener. We can open a fire hydrant with this thing. Or we access water. May not be the cleanest water, but we have us another way to access water. Not only with the seal cock key, but now we have a fire hydrant key. Also this, when we bug out, we're gonna try to be as gray as possible. So in a situation where everybody has to evacuate or leave their homes and stuff, we're not gonna step out the house full tack, right? But in a situation where you get your family to safety and it's time to do some recon work, then you can kind of keep you a little outfit under here to kind of switch off into. Right here. We got us some extra bungee cords tucked down in there. Some towels for oil or grease or anything when you're working on a vehicle. We'll keep that stowed away right here. 
We have extra storage in here. Also, if you notice, before we took uh, some of these contents out, we had us a lot of space in here. So with the space that's utilized in here, or the space that you can utilize if you take away the chairs that were stored in here, could be space that you could put a bug out kit or any of the other supplies that you may need. There is ample space still in the back and available for whatever you need it. Now, let's come here in the front. Inside our glove compartment, we got us plenty of snacks in there, plenty of bars, protein bars, uh, snack bars that can fill people up. We have a Missouri map. We're in the great state of Missouri. And so we want to know exactly where we're going when we go to our bug out location. In the middle council here, you know, in a bug out situation, nobody's going to be taking their, you know, their igloo cups or anything like that. So we keep us our radios in here. Uh, these particular uh, radios right here um, are not the best. Uh, I do have some on the way that have a 35 mile range. Um, I will hopefully put up a video when those come in so I can tell you, you know, the reviews on that and tell you how well they go and let you know what brand those are. In the middle here, we have another knife. On the door, we have extra, extra batteries, double A's and triple A batteries. We have an emergency tool, so if you're driving down the road, you get to an accident, you can cut your seatbelt off, or if you see somebody who needs help, you can smash a window and provide help. You keep that inside the side door. Uh, my vehicle's very minimalistic. I don't want to give myself away while I'm out there, my, you know, because if I put myself in, in danger, I put my family in danger as well. So I want my car to look as concealed as possible. I don't want anybody to pass by my car or to look inside my car and say, wow, this is something that I want to break into or these are resources that I really want to get my hands on. So everything is tucked away either secretly. Uh, I won't give away the locations of my firearms inside of this vehicle. However, I will say it's a good idea to kind of look your vehicle over and find places where you can put a firearm. Uh, example, if there is a checkpoint, a military or army checkpoint, and they are not allowing, you know, firearms to pass through or they're doing vehicle searches, it might be a good idea to get something cheap like a, a high point or, or something of that nature and, and put it somewhere in the car where, you know, if you did have to surrender a firearm, then, you know, when you get through the checkpoint, you can, you can kind of revamp and and use that firearm so i am saying you probably want to put something somewhere that's kind of disclosed over here we do have that seal cock key that we were talking about for the building Keep that right there in the door, nice and prepared. And here, this little sack, sack right here, I have about five pair of gloves that are strapped down and ready to go, and compressed. Inside of this little orange bag here, I actually have perimeter alarms that I've made myself. Ordered these alarms uh, myself with a nine, nine volt battery. And uh, where we decide to make camp for the night, I'd set up a perimeter. Um, once it's tripped, it'll set off an alarm and it'll kind of signal me and the family that there's somebody that is in our general area that, that we probably don't want there or that we need to check out. And finally, back here in the back seat, we want to make sure that we keep plenty of fluids for the vehicle. We got oil, we have coolant, and we have windshield wiper fluid. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep all of the, the fluids 
up on the vehicle while we're out and we're bugging out and we're inside our bug out vehicles. A good thing to also check uh, on your vehicles, especially during this time is, you know, lift your vehicle up, shake it, check out your ball joints and your tie rods and things like that. Uh, if they need to be replaced, you do not want those things going out on you while you're out there and you're trying to get your family to a safe location. Uh, the middle here, uh, you can also sit your bug out bags. Uh, the reason I choose the middle of the SUV for uh, the positioning of the bug out bags because if you're in an accident and you're in a rollover accident or you're under fire and you're under attack and someone's trying to get to you or you need to go real fast you don't want to have to reach over or you don't want to have to run out and try to get inside the trunk for your stuff if you're in a rollover you don't want to have to try to get all the way to the back for your your stuff you want to be able to reach over into the back seat grab it and then crawl out climb out or just just plain run right here in a waterproof sealed bag we actually have whole meals freeze-dried meals shelf life 20 25 years pretty self-explanatory Finally, is we have a medical kit. And our medical kit is very extensive. It is equipped with everything that you could need. Um, I have a couple of dogs as well. Um, I am still working on a video uh, in order for you to be able to use your bug out vehicle and still take your dogs with you. I actually have uh, shots for the dogs. Uh, you know flea and tick medicine uh, things like that so uh, wait for that vehicle next but this is the last thing that I have stored inside my vehicle uh, I hope you really like the vehicle or in in the video today and if there was anything that you thought was helpful please you know let me know and if there's anything that you think that I should add to this bug out vehicle please leave a comment and like the video and I appreciate all your time thank you and stay safe